and a very warm welcome to your English news package with radio and television Tonga for the hour. Making headlines, hundreds attended the prayer service for the late Minister of Agriculture, Food and Forestry yesterday. Selling of expired food items continue with retailers trying to hide the expiry date and the Ministry of Fisheries prohibits fishing of mallet fish and sea turtle so they can breed for local consumption. We'll have these and more stories later on in the bulletin, together with uh, sports to wrap up with the latest weather update. Now with the news in details. Hundreds attended the prayer service for the late Minister of Agriculture, Food and Forestry yesterday evening at the LDS Middle School in Havelu. It was attended by the Speaker of Parliament, Acting Prime Minister, and the members of Parliament, Cabinet Ministers and the Diplomatic Corps. My Fernando Bola with more on this story. The first prayer service was held at the residence of the deceased Tofoa and attended by Honorable Lupe Pau Utayone and distinguished guests. Later in the afternoon, the body of the late Mano Pangai Hingano was taken to the LDS Church at Hamvelu for a formal ceremony led by the government. This morning, the late Mano Pangai Hingano's body was then taken to his home island Haapai for his funeral service to be held at Uiha Haapai and to be attended by the acting Prime Minister Onopol Poasima Dailete along with government officials tomorrow. As such, all flags in Tonga will fly half-mast on Thursday to show respect for Vliami Mano Pangai Hingano in which his body will be finally laid to rest. The late Mano Pangai Hingano was appointed as the Minister of Agriculture, Food and Forestry on the 28th of December last year. He then died on the 10th of June at the Auckland City Hospital in New Zealand. Vahifonotu Bola for Radio and Television Tonga News. The Consumer Affairs Division of the Trade Ministry is urging the public to be more cautious of uh, some products with expiry dates that have appeared in some shops while also advising people to always check the expiry dates and on food items before purchasing. My Fonotu Bola again with the details. In an interview with the Deputy CEO of the Ministry of Trade and Economic Development, Sandra Di Fifita, who is the Secretary of the Consumer Affairs Division, she says the concern is because they've noticed that most shops still putting up expired good items on their shelves. Fifita adds this is a breach of the Consumer Protection Act and inspectors have been taking away a few items from shops in Tongatapu to destroy. The Consumer Affairs Division of the Trade Ministry works collaboratively with the Food Division of the Ministry of Agriculture to ensure food items being sold are safe for consumption. Fifita is urging people to be more cautious when purchasing food stores and pay attention to the expiry dates on food items. This issue has been posted on social media many times and the ministry urges the public to report to the ministry immediately of any issues on expired food items they purchase from the shops. Vahifonuatu Bola for Radio and Television Tonga News. The Ministry of Fisheries is warning people against the fishing for mallet fish and sea turtle lest they become extinct. As such, the ban of fishing mallet fish started on the 1st of June until the 30th of July. This is due to science research and the result shows that this period is the time that mallet fish are breeding so they need a chance to breed more of their kind for daily consumption. Speaking to radio and to television Tonga News, the Principal Fisheries Officer Losli Niloto Ahia says anyone fishing for sea turtle and mallet fish during this time needs to contact them first for approval before fishing for these types. <laughs> This regulation is applied to female and these are bag sea turtles only, except for male sea turtles. Male sea turtles are allowed to be fished from August to February. According to the regulation, sea turtles under 45 centimeters are not allowed to fish. It includes a sea turtle meat that are already sliced without permission from the ministry. We won't allow it to be sold in the market. Fishermen must first seek approval from our office so one of our officers can come over and inspect and weigh it before we allow them to fish and to sell them. Sea turtle is one of the living species in the ocean 
who has international regulation as people are prohibited to export sea turtle meat abroad. If anyone is found exporting turtle meat overseas, fisheries officers will seize it or return it back to the owner. There are punishments for those breaching this regulation. Sometimes we seize one or two plastic bags of mallet fish and we bring it to the office and complete the paperwork according to our protocol. And then after that, the CEO has the authority to decide how to destroy the mallet fish or sea turtle. In the past five years, after reporting to the CEO, then he will say to take it to the Alonga uh, Center so they can use it for consumption as a way of destroying it. Lotto Ahia adds, although the ministry is yet to collect any information on the number of sea turtles that has been illegally fished in Tonga's water, but the regulations for banning of fishing boats from fishing sea turtles still remain and they need to follow it. If any fisherman catches a sea turtle in his fishing net, according to international regulation, they will have to take the sea turtle back to the sea. These regulations are aimed at preserving sea turtles and mullet fish for the future as it is slowly decreasing in numbers due to overfishing. Despite the huge increase in the prices of petroleum products in Tonga, a mini float parade was held in downtown Nukalofa this afternoon to show their full support for the Matema Atonga team. Some vehicles were painted red with the Tongan flags on top of their vehicles. It is part of showing the members of the Matema Atonga team that although they won't be at the Mount Smart Stadium on Saturday for their games against the Kiwis to cheer for them, their hearts and thoughts will be with them. Today's mini float is just the beginning of the nation showing their hundred support for the team. Government buildings and private residences have been painted red as well as students wearing red to school today. Meanwhile, the Tongan community in Auckland are hosting various programs such as a traditional kava ceremony yesterday for the members of Mate Maatonga and was attended by Honorable Fagaula Milangi Fafanua. Hundreds of government officials from across the Commonwealth have gathered in Kigali, Rwanda yesterday to attend the Commonwealth Business Forum, which began yesterday. Representing the government of Tonga at the sessions yesterday were the Minister for Trade and Economic Development, Honorable Dr. Vidami Waskelato, and the Chief Secretary and Secretary to Cabinet, Edgar Koka. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister, the Honorable Huagama Miliko, arrived in Kigali, Rwanda yesterday for the Commonwealth Heads of Government Meeting 2022. Official welcoming courtesies by the Rwandan authorities were diligently extended to the Prime Minister and the Travelling Party, also his wife Fiona Sovaleni. The meeting will end this Friday, the 23rd of June 2022. And the Tonga National Center for Women and Children is encouraging the victims of domestic violence that there are safer places for them when they feel insecure or unsafe at home. Speaking to radio and television Tonga News, the center's director, Eleni Lato Ila, says their main concern is some of the victims feel they are being left behind and there's no way forward for them. And with such a situation, the center is trying to change their way of thinking by providing trainings and counseling sessions with the victims. The aim is to help them cope with the situation and to move on with their lives as some have children that are heavily relying on them. The center offers various trainings for women, especially victims, with the financial support for the Australian government to build the capabilities of victims in various areas such as food preparations and begging and sewing, as these activities could help them earn income for their families. <laughs> Once they have completed the training under the Australian-funded project, the participants will be offered with the required resources 
to run their own business with hope that it will help them financially. Once they are fully equipped, women could be more independent and are capable of looking after themselves and their families. Meanwhile, there are women and young children who are in need of assistance but are scared to seek help from the center as they fear about the confidentiality of their sharing of experiences. But Lato Ila clarified that such information is highly confidential. However, Lato Ila is encouraging the public to contact the center if they know anyone who is facing domestic violence at home or is a victim of any sorts of violence, such as violence against women and girls should be ended. The center was started in 1995 by the Catholic Women Lead Project, used as a safe house, but then they handed it over to the government with the same goal of helping women and children, as well as economic empowerment. And that concludes tonight's English news package, but before we part, here's one final look at tonight's top stories. Hundreds attended the prayer service for the late Minister of Agriculture, Food and Forestry yesterday. Selling of expired food items continue with retailers who trying to hide the expiry dates. And the Ministry of Fisheries prohibits fishing of mullet fish and sea turtles so they can breed for local consumption. And that's it for tonight. Thank you for your company. I'm Alice Dubo. Have a blessed evening.